Yes. Welcome, everybody. Nice menu. Uh, well, let's talk about front end. Yeah. So, um, who are we? I'm Steph. I'm a front end developer uh, for five years now at Synetic. Um, and this is uh, Tom. And Tom. And Tom. <laughs> the same, but then for four years. Um, Actually, we just started a few months ago, but uh, a few months apart, but uh, it's just <laughs> five or four years, doesn't matter. So, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, our way to the future of frontend, um, and with that we mean showing you some new cool stuff. But we can just look at the future, uh, also looking to the past, so the journey we're going to take together uh, takes us from the past to the present to the future. Um, and uh, with that, we're going to start in the past. Yes, we're starting in the past. That's, uh, that's a problem. Um, well, like we said, we work at Synetic. Um, previously at Synetic, uh, we used to work with Drupal 7. Uh, we had a standardized base team. Um, uh, we did some changes on the, the base theme and uh, we did that by overriding the, uh, the code that was provided by the base team. Um, yeah, that is not flexible. That is the conclusion, I think. Um, this is how one of our files look. Um, don't worry if you cannot read it because this is the old stuff. Uh, the only thing you see here is that it's a lot in one file. Um, a lot of stuff happens. Um, so what I said, a lot of things are going on in one file and side effects are very probable because if you look at this massive yeah, spaghetti, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong and what's going wrong sometimes. Um, let me see. So the past is the past. Let's go <laughs> to the present. Time for the present. Yeah, time for so the present. It's the best. <laughs> sort of. We'll see. It should be the future. The present. Um, well, as you could see, the, the last file was very large, uh, complicated uh, file. So we started to look at uh, alternatives to split it up, and uh, we landed on uh, the atomic design principles. Uh, is anyone uh, familiar with uh, the atomic design principles? Uh, most front enders, I assume, but uh, for those who don't know, atomic design principles uh, means you split it up between the, uh, the small, smallest uh, parts available, so that's, those are the atoms. So a button uh, is used multiple times, it's, it's an atom, uh, but it do doesn't mean something on itself. Um, from atoms we go to molecules, so a card is something that's bigger, it's used in multiple contexts, so that's a molecule. We go to an organism, it's something that's standalone. From there we build templates and that those um, are used to make actual pages. So, this is also called component driven development. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> we'll show. Yeah, we'll yes. show uh, the difference between the, the last file you remember, there was a lot of code. Uh, what you can see here is that um, uh, by using component driven design, it's much cleaner. Uh, uh, the files we have are um, single use, single purpose, and they're way easier to debug and adjust. Well, enlarge is a little bit. Um, you see, it's not the, the complete spaghetti uh, of code, and we have our variables and attributes that are uh, added to this uh, file. Uh, on the top of the file, uh, not, a much, not much HTML. Um, it's way cleaner, way easier to debug. Um, let me see what we have here. <laughs> oh, it's an extra slide, doesn't matter. Uh, but that is one of the principles we're working at um, it, at the present at this moment. Um, back to you. The way we implement this in Drupal, of course, is a paragraphs. <laughs> As you most are familiar with this. Um, so those components Tom showed uh, just now, uh, it was a slider or a carousel. Um, and it will be as uh, a paragraph available to the, the content editor. And if you go to the next slide, I will. Uh, it's implemented uh, within uh, the, the templates folder of the Drupal theme. Um, and the only thing uh, that is in it is this small piece of code. Uh, we use the templates folder um, 
as a kind of standardization layer, so we clean all our variables, strip everything we don't need in our actual front-end code to make front-end code itself as simple as possible, as clean as possible, so you don't need to have a lot of Drupal knowledge to, uh, to join us and to uh, work with it. So um, we split the templates folder, the Drupal templates folder, and the uh, components folder um, those have a, a very strict uh, separation and you can um, assume that every variable that's in the components folder is clean as we like to say. Yeah, for me when I started working with Drupal it was, well, I, I think most of you uh, know the, the learning curve of Drupal which goes sort of overhanging and all kinds of uh, uh, stuff going on there in this little cartoon. Um, for me, it was a lot of work to uh, work around Drupal in that, in that period of time. Uh, and this allows uh, me and, and the new developers uh, to just take a component, you see this is a carousel, okay, we have carousel, carousel slides and stuff. Uh, it's very easy to add your own HTML and you have nothing, no side effects and stuff. Yeah, and around the, the component we actually include, so the carousel.squid, uh, there's a, an embed. Uh, which is um, also a standardization layer which expands uh, the attributes we supply to this paragraph. So if we want to add a class, a uh, specific class to all paragraphs, we can do it in, the, in this, this standardization layer. Also, uh, one thing I want to point out on uh, line 6, well, the only, we cannot read this it's word. something I don't see in a lot of uh, examples of Twig, but it's very useful because this need means uh, you create a new scope and it was an eye-opener <laughs> when we found out. Next. I tried zooming in but I couldn't, so, sorry. <laughs> uh, let me demonstrate something. Um, and now we are going somewhere. Uh, we have yes, that one. this here. Um, for example, we have a... Oh, we don't have... A we list. have no examples. <laughs> Uh, oh, this is okay. For example, we can see it there, but that's yeah, but that, that's uh, the, the wrong. Can I do it like this? <laughs> I like SpongeBob, but this is a bit too much, maybe. Uh, what I'll do you is I'll. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you have, uh, if you. Uh, Where is it? Yeah, it's gone. Nice. <laughs> Still no. Let's see. Let's Five see. I just want to. Stop the presentation for a bit. I think that's better. We have two presentations. One which should be broken because we get to the yeah yeah, yeah. The uh, correct yeah, presentation. Yeah, yeah. End it. Let's see. Let's see what works. Oh, perfect. Now we have side stuff side. next to it. It doesn't matter. Side by side. I just don't want this. Let's make it full screen. Yes, we're here. It's okay. Not like we use computers every day or something. No, no. no. I, I don't know how to push the buttons anymore, but okay. What we did is we made a, a component, uh, a simple card, um, and um, yeah, this is the way we're working at the moment. So uh, it's a simple card, and um, uh, we have the paragraphs in which you can add it. So sometimes you have a layout, uh, and uh, when it's three calls or two calls, you can add the components in there. But it has a problem uh, so because. Just to get back, this teaser part is, a, is an organism. Uh, you will recognize the, the atom, the button, uh, also the, the date label uh, is an atom. So you can already see some uh, familiar components. Uh, and it means if you scroll down, <laughs> I will scroll down. Yeah, this is, this is the pro one of the problems we're uh, encountering. Uh, so in Drupal, we have the paragraphs, and sometimes they're in this multi column layout. Uh, what we want is um, uh, this simple, um, uh, how do you call it, the, the card component on multiple places. Uh, so sometimes the column may be small, but sometimes, uh, or narrow, and sometimes the column may be pretty wide. And this is an uh, example where uh, we think it demonstrates a bit what the struggle is. Yeah, uh, we use the layout across module for this to give the, the Editor, the possibility to place the, the paragraphs themselves. 
Yeah, and so, of course you can say yeah. this is a this is a wider column than the column on, to the left, uh, but that would uh, go against um, uh, these being truly separate components because then they have an influence from upside uh, from uh, their parents in the in the selection or in the DOM. Um, remember this. We'll get back to this, uh, but first I'm going to try to reanimate the presentation. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah there's in the present, again. we mostly use Drupal for all our websites. We're starting to use some the couple of websites. Uh, we had a great presentation awesome. with Preston, of course, uh, with uh, the Cobalt or Headless uh, uh, websites. And we're starting to, uh, to build with that. So, going forward, we would like to uh, to automate the, uh, this better. Um, at Synetic we like standardization. We have a lot of standardization, so we have something called the Drupal Kickstart, uh, which is a, a base team and all sorts of modules uh, we can provide to quickly get up and running with, uh, with something uh, we see as uh, the bare minimum. Uh, yeah, for website. example, if a client wants a new website, uh, there are a couple of components already there. So. You've seen our journey from the, the files with a lot of code to files with which have only a little bit of code. Um, these components are usually included, so a slider or a carousel or layout paragraphs. Or um, It's just an easy way to start up the website. And those components are a lot easier to uh, reuse between Drupal websites. But we would uh, like to go a step further and uh, go in uh, beyond uh, Drupal. So, yes. Nice. Yeah, we, we hope that, that is okay it's, with it's you guys. Drupal DM, yeah, so. Uh, Let's press him. Okay. Kind of stole a joke because he already said uh, something going beyond, beyond Drupal. But, uh, well, we would like to use uh, Vue, uh, React, and all sorts of uh, things uh, as well with the same components we already standardized. So, one thing we are looking into right now is using custom elements. Uh, so, maybe some of you know them by the name of web components uh, to standardize those components between all sorts of frameworks make them framework independent it's not like we have all uh, styling in those uh, but um, the, the, the logic for making a slider work or an, uh, all sorts of interactive components will be in there with some base styling that we can expand into part so that's the goal we would like to achieve, uh, and we were working on uh, as we speak. Yeah. So the and we would like to achieve that cross-platform. So <laughs> if we either use Drupal or Vue or uh, React, for example, uh, the components should be included and it should be okay. Um, so unfortunately, the support <laughs> is getting there. Um, it, it works, there are polyfills, so we can actually use this in production. Um, we don't care about the uh, Internet Explorer anymore. I hope at least some clients still want a little bit of uh, support, but um, we're getting there. Microsoft said it's dropping uh, IE next month, I think, but they've already said that about a dozen times or so. Yeah, it's a bit like Drupal 7, right? <laughs> so you keep reanimating it. Um, but uh, if you don't know, this is a website we as front-end developers use more often when we're feeling that we're on the edge of new stuff and stuff that's been implemented in browsers already. <laughs> uh, this is a website, it's called Can I Use? And you type in a feature, it just has a search box, you type in a feature and you see all these browsers with their current version and some past and future versions. Uh, if it's uh, solid green, that's perfect because then you can use it. Uh, yeah, the, the stuff over here, it's a little bit shady. Uh, there's usually some side notes, and you see here uh, that it's enabled to uh, a config or a flag in a browser. Uh, so it's not usable in production because you cannot ask every uh, visitor of your website to first go to Chrome uh, uh, slash slash flags and uh, edit their browser, for example, uh, uh, to make it work. So that's a little bit. Uh, if you visit this website, please enable this flag. It's, it's yeah, that's a, that's a little bit website. weird. So um, that is the web component part, uh, which uh, is going to help us with, uh, with standardization across all sorts of platforms, all sorts of websites, um, maybe in the future even uh, voice assistants and, and everything, but for now uh, mainly websites. Um, so 
the next step of the future we want to take? Yeah. Fluid design and container queries. There's new stuff. Uh, fluid design is very handy because a component can uh, already account for itself a little bit. So if it's wider, it will spread out uh, its items, or when it's smaller, it will um, uh, also account for that. Uh, we have a next demo uh, in a while. Um, uh, what I also want to talk about is container queries, and that's something that needs a little bit more of an explanation. Um, how many of you are familiar with media queries and uh, uh, their use on the web? Just a show of hands. Okay. Oh, that's a lot. Nice. <laughs> Love you guys. Um, what we have uh, with media queries is uh, basically um, media queries allow a developer, front-end developer or full stack or back well, uh, wh whoever works with it, uh, to um, adjust the website so to make it responsive. So you have a website and uh, the media query code checks uh, what is the size of this, uh, this viewport. So how wide is this screen or how wide is the screen of my phone and adjust the CSS uh, accordingly. Um, that has a problem, uh, but the CSS working group is, uh, has worked really hard and has made container queries. Uh, I will give you a demo in a while. Um, but what is important to know is that uh, the media queries on the left are based on the viewport, so how wide is the screen that is viewing this website, and the container queries um, are based on the size of the element itself. And that might seem like a small change, but for us as front-end developers it's quite big. Um, this can mean that we can make a component self-aware. And uh, it's nice that we can have uh, something, a uh, component that we can drop everywhere and it just works. But as you could see in the previous demo, it doesn't. We don't know in what, uh, what type of situation it, it will be shown and if all uh, content is clearly visible. Uh, there, can, there can be a minimum size to a component uh, if you show it uh, in the um, stacks. Or um, as uh, the demo uh, showed, uh, an image can become very large because the, the width of the, the card is 100% of the container. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will do a before and after uh, in, a, in a minute or two. Um, so we had we have media queries, support is perfect. We have container queries. So, uh, the syntax is almost the same, uh, except for add media means, well, uh, what medium is, uh, uh, what uh, device is looking at this. And here the container size is something you can set to your uh, element itself. Um, well, back to can I use. Uh, the support is, well... Abysmal. Yeah, it could be better, but uh, we're getting there. Um, it is the future in progress, uh, so to speak. Uh, yeah. So this is, uh, in, in these, uh, it's, it's in progress. Um, on uh, December 3rd, 2021, so a few months ago, uh, there was an update and uh, we came across this, uh, this tweet when uh, trying uh, to make a demo. Um, the old documentation didn't tell us we needed that size uh, part, which is in front, uh, in front of the min yeah, uh, width. So, so the, the, uh, we couldn't get the demo working because it turns out we already had a browser that <laughs> allowed us to use this uh, this syntax. Um, so the demo didn't work, and when we found these tweets, we had a working demo. This was a few months ago, um, and then we were preparing for this uh, talk, and uh, we were <laughs> working with exactly the same same uh, demonstration, um, and it doesn't work like that anymore. It's constantly changing. So all, uh, I meant a web, a web component which uh, detects uh, the support of uh, uh, container queries and all the red dots uh, it just doesn't work plain. Uh, it doesn't work. All those browsers have the flag uh, for container query support enabled. Um, the red don't work, so Canary, Beta, uh, the current version uh, 102. Uh, don't work. Uh, and the other one uh, with um, an, another uh, flag enabled and a container type specified do work, but still without that size 
that specifies in the tweet that we knew, need right now, and also MEN and the Mozilla Developer Network told, uh, tells us that we need. So it's yeah. Well, for us, it's sometimes a little bit. We don't know what the truth actually is, and uh, what you can see here, uh, this uh, slide on the, the, the screenshot on the right bottom is uh, uh, version 101 uh, from Chrome, but in version 102, sometimes it stops working and 103 and 104. So it's, it's very much in progress at this moment. Um, a thing on the bottom is, with, uh, with uh, container uh, queries, you need to specify what your container is. So it knows what to look for uh, with uh, weights or other properties. So uh, previously it was uh, either a contain or a container um, uh, attribute you needed to set, uh, but that, that has changed to container type or container name because you can also use named containers. Uh, so That's things it. change uh, constantly. So we oh, it works. <laughs> it does. This demo uh, still works. <laughs> No, yes, we'll see, we'll see. Yes, so. Yeah, we uh, also deliberately didn't restart our laptops because you, 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 who, who knows when Chrome decides to, uh, to update itself. I already have the update uh, logo on top. And yeah, yeah, the song we have to restart it for a whole week. Because <laughs> we don't want to do this. Um, I um, uh, showed you Firefox. I absolutely love Firefox. Uh, no mistakes there. But um, Firefox just doesn't support it the way uh, Chrome does yet. Uh, so this is the old demo, and you see here that this card is, yeah, it's perfect for mobile, for example, because it's a very narrow design and that works, but it's also showing itself uh, on double the size, but the same uh, design. And it's, I don't know, I, yeah, I would say, I would love to see my face, but I also made it impossible here, so we'll see. But uh, this is Chrome Canary, uh, in which uh, the Chrome dev team um, pushes their new stuff uh, more regularly. Um, one thing to note first, I've added a flag. So if you want new stuff uh, in Chrome and you see uh, something's behind the flag, you can go to uh, Chrome uh, 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 flags and then uh, just in the URL bar, you search for container queries and you can enable it. Uh, you can also set it to default, uh, but I won't do that because that will break my demo it's at this moment. It's disabled right now. Will be yeah, so this is the same demo uh, as we saw in Firefox, um, but it's a little bit different because here uh, you see that it looks way nicer. Uh, it doesn't have the same styling as the one on the left. So uh, uh, how can I show this the best? Uh, I also have this demo, uh, which I can show you in one go. I've also had some code here, so maybe for questions later. Uh, it is the same component. Uh, but what we can do is, I can uh, make this draggable. That's also something in, uh, uh, in HTML. You can just add an attribute and stuff gets uh, resizable. Uh, so this is the same component, but as you might have uh, spotted already, is that when the, uh, the screen size, which represents the, uh, the dashed uh, border, uh, gets uh, lower, then uh, it changes its design as well. So the date now has uh, a white background and is uh, put uh, over my face, sort of. And now here you see the, uh, yeah, it's a design that is better suited for wider screens because why put everything in a, mo in a mobile design uh, when you don't need it? Um, it's a more efficient use of space. Um, oh, yeah, there's a question. Yeah, yeah the dotted line is the container. Yeah, yeah the dotted line, what I tried to, uh, to show is that um, the dotted line is uh, uh, the parent element of where this card is in. So what I try to mimic is uh, that this is the screen width. Maybe I should have added a, a phone uh, edge around it or something. Uh, I can also show it in another way, but for now, um, it is important because uh, what we can see here, it is one component. Oh, where is it? Oh, look, here it is. Um, it is one component. Uh, the HTML doesn't change except for the resized container. Oh, sorry. This is way too small for you, of course. Uh, so the resized container is uh, something that, is, uh, that I'm updating now at this moment. But for the rest, it's just the same. Uh, and if you look at this, uh, these are the same uh, components as well. Uh, but what we have here 
is uh, an extra, um, uh, yeah, it's a web component. Um, the web components allow you to give uh, uh, your, own comp your own name. Uh, it has uh, some limitations uh, because some words are reserved, for example. Um, but it's, uh, everything here uh, is the same component. So we just repeated it, uh, but put it in a different, uh, different width. So we have a smaller column to the left and we have a wider column uh, to the right. But it's all the same component, uh, just some different text uh, that we put in. Um, so this is web components with uh, <coughs> container queries in action. And we hope that this will uh, be our um, uh, yeah, our future. Yeah, we yeah. are very much looking forward to this future because we can truly make standalone components which are dropping. Actually, it should just work, uh, which is something that's get taught a lot. So. Um, that is our presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, please go ahead. Are there any questions? We have a walking microphone now, yeah. so we can uh, make this perfect. Anyone? So, what about images? Um, are they also uh, available for container queries? Uh, in what in what context? The question is: Are images also available for container queries? Um, we have our source set attribute. Uh, we can um, uh, there's some stuff in HTML and CSS already that uh, accounts for viewport size and loading in uh, different images. Is that what you uh, mean? What, what is the what is the goal? Is it to reduce file sizes on smaller devices because you don't need a full HD? Well, also uh, besides just uh, the the query itself, they're also becoming um, the the VW uh, property that's currently available, a few ways. You can also get the QW, so the container web. So you could use that for the source set for... Um, uh, I was talking about picture of different focal points for different containers. Ah, yeah, you could use yeah, the, the well, picture element itself the, the, that we currently have, uh, but instead of using a uh, few width um, queries, because you also use container queries in it, you, uh, or media queries in it, you could use container queries in it. Okay, but so for <laughs> that's the goal. For focal points, there's also something uh, being made by the CSS working group. I just forgot the name, but it is on its way. So uh, uh, there's also some some Drupal modules that let you pick uh, the focal point, but uh, in a while that will also be a part of the web standard. So uh, that will make life a bit easier, I think. Also, are there any other questions? Yes, yeah. go for it. <laughs> How does it work with nested uh, container elements? Could you repeat? How does it work with uh, nested container elements? So if you nest um, container sizes uh, within each other. Oh, that is nice. We can go. Um, we can go all the way there. Um, we haven't uh, used them in production at this moment, so we haven't encountered this uh, at this moment. I don't really know the answer to it. Uh, yes, but uh, the container queries, uh, you can give them also a name, so they won't get mixed up. Uh, so you can uh, specify this is this container query and this is this container query. But they all act the same because if something is smaller and there uh, within there's a ch child element that's also smaller, it will also work. But I can imagine, it's a nice question, I can imagine that there would be some edge cases in which you think we need a new standard for this. But. There's a really nice uh, YouTube video of Una Kravitz which demonstrates this. So maybe you uh, could have a look at that. Yeah, Google, but, Google um, Chrome definitely makes uh, perfect videos on uh, the new stuff they add to Chrome. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, I, I would highly recommend uh, if you're interested in front end and you want to see more and know more, these are really good videos. So. Uh, I think there's time for minus one last question. There's no questions. Thanks for your time. I hope you have a nice day. And I hope to see you again. Thank you very much.